Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I drew this dog using colored pencils and giving you some tips and advice for how you can get a realistic dog using colored pencils. So before that, if you wanna watch the real time version of this and follow along with me and learn lots more tips and techniques, then you can follow along with me at my Patreon where I've got all of them available for you now. And also all of the materials that I'm using are listed in the description because I always get a lot of questions asking what I'm using. So if you wanna know exactly what I'm using, make sure to check out the description. Anyway, let's get straight into the tutorial. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm working on the dog's eyes. And I am using a reference photo, especially when you're doing realism, you really want to make sure that you're using a reference photo. And so I always like to work on the eyes first, but that's just my personal preference. And what I'm doing is I first outline the darkest parts of the eyes. So all of the details in the pupil and also just the corner of the eye and the waterline and stuff like that. It's all really dark for the dog's eyes. There was a lot of little highlights in here so I made sure that I outlined them so that I didn't get colour pencil on them and so that I could preserve the whiteness of the highlight. But the highlights aren't completely white so I made sure that I added some grey tones as well and I also went and I did the white of the eye. So one thing to notice when you're doing the white of the eye is that it's not actually white. There's a lot of grey tones and I even added a bit of purple as well. So I liked using the French greys and also some little violet grey and purpley colours as well. And I used quite a lot of the sepia tones. I am using the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils and these are really creamy which means that you can blend them really nicely together to get a smooth finish. So like I said, I like to do the main shadows first and then I like to build up the other shadows that aren't quite as dark in the iris. I also like to get the white of the eye in quite quickly so that I can judge everything else. So now I'm just going in and making some final touch-ups and adding little details. I want to make sure everything is perfectly smooth and that I've got a nice contrast going on. So with realism, contrast is so important. I always mention how important contrast is, which means that you've got to get your darks as dark as they need to be and the lights as light as they need to be. Also, one thing to notice is that you'll probably realize that when you get in the rest of the eye, so the darkest parts, that actually the white of the eye stands out really brightly and you can even add some darker greys on there. So always be able to be flexible to go back in and change things that need to be tweaked a bit if any areas need to be darkened up. Don't feel like just because you've finished that area that you can't go back to it and make adjustments. Especially don't feel like that you're going to ruin it. So a lot of you could be cautious because you're beginners and you think that once you've done a certain area, you don't want to go back and mess it up, which I totally understand. I, I was like that a lot when I just started using colored pencils, but it's really worth it just to keep tweaking things until you're happy with it. In order to avoid burnishing and messing it up so you can't add lots more layers, make sure that when you do your initial layers that you do them really lightly and don't press too hard. The only areas that I pressed quite hard in the beginning is the darkest areas because I knew that I was mainly just going to be adding black and dark browns and maybe a bit of blue to those areas. I knew that I didn't want to do a lot of layering. But for example with the white of the eye, I used a lot less pressure at the start because I knew that I wanted to add a lot more layers on top. Also one thing to mention is that you should always keep your pencil as sharp as possible. If you want to do realism and get smooth shading, then you need to make sure that you're having your pencil really sharp so that you can get all of those details and lay the pencil down smoothly and get into all of the white grain of the paper so that you don't have this grainy look of the white paper showing through. So now that I've finished the eyes, I want to go and start working on the fur. So this dog had some shorter fur and then a lot of long fur near the ears. And doing fur is very much like doing hair. So if you want to check out how I drew hair in colored pencil, then I'll put a card up above so you can check that out because the technique that I used was very, very similar. So what I did first was again, I established the darkest shadows. I looked at my reference photo, I got a dark brown color and I just followed the direction that the hair was flowing in using small lines and I just built up the pressure for the darkest areas. Then I glazed other colours over the top like some brown ochres, burnt siennas just to get the colour accurate and the tone accurate and then I went and I blended it out with some lighter colours. 
So for example, I blended out the darkest shadows with like a burnt sienna, but then for the lighter areas, I'd use like a cream or ivory tone and even a white for the real bright highlights. But especially if I wanted to blend out really thin areas, so like get some highlighted strands, I made sure the pencil was really, really sharp. And I just continue this technique throughout all of the fur. So again, even for this shorter fur, I'm still blocking in the darkest shadows. So I first went in with the sepia, which is a dark brown. You don't have to use these exact color names, just using a dark brown would be fine. And then I even added a bit of black just for the real darkest parts of that shadow. So I'm working on the whole of the ear at the moment. I'm just looking at the reference photo, blocking in all of those dark shadows. And you can see that I'm following the direction that the fur's going in. And I'm doing it very lightly. I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time. This whole piece took me about 10 hours to do. So I didn't do it really quickly. I made sure that I took my time and took regular breaks. I really recommend taking breaks when you're doing such a kind of time consuming piece because if you work on it for a long time, you get into kind of the habit of maybe wanting to rush parts of it because for example, if you've done a large portion of the fur, you might find it a bit tedious, get a bit bored or just get a bit like irritable and on edge doing it. And so you might wanna just rush through it and get it done. And that's why I recommend taking breaks because then when you come back to it, you'll be nice and fresh and you can work on it again and you're probably less likely to want to rush through it. Because it is really evident if you rush through certain areas that you haven't spent as much time on them. So again, I glazed some colors for the warmer areas that were a bit more saturated. I added some more like burnt ochres, which are more of an orangey tone. And I really looked at the colors on the reference photo. If you find it really difficult to kind of pick out the colors you need for your drawing, then I really recommend importing your reference photo into something like paint on your computer and use the eyedropper tool to create little swatches of the colors that you need and then get your color pencil sets and see which color best matches it. You don't actually have to get an exact color match. It's more about having some shadow tones, mid tones and highlighted tones so that again, you can get that contrast. So once I added all those colors to make it color accurate and blended it out with those lighter pencils like those creams and those white pencils, I went in again and I made sure that I added the dark areas because when you blend with lighter colors, you might lighten up some of those shadows. And finally, a little trick that I like to do to add some details over the top, some little hairs, is just go in with this craft knife. Again, this is listed in the description if you wanna check this out. And I'm using this just to scrape away some of the wax and reveal some lighter hairs underneath. And this just helps break up all of those uniformed clumps of hair and makes it look a bit more free flowing and a bit more natural. So that's it for the ear and now I'm carrying on with the fur around the eyes and this is shorter fur. But again, I don't do it in a much different way than what I did with the long fur. I do it in a pretty similar way. The only difference is I'm using shorter pencil strokes because the fur is shorter. Around the eye, the fur is going in a few different directions. So it's important to keep looking at your reference photo for every single area that you're doing to see if the fur does change direction. So I added the sepia, now I'm going in, I went in with a layer of the brown ochre to establish a base. I like to add the shadows, then establish a base tone across the whole area, and then go in and layer and glaze some other colours over the top. And as you add more and more layers, you can use more and more pressure to burnish and to blend them. But what I noticed with the Caran Dash pencils is that they do blend really easily without you even having to apply much pressure. So don't feel like you have to really push your pencil down as hard as you can to make it blend. Just use as much pressure as is needed to get it to blend softly. You don't actually have to press that hard. So once I did that, again, I'm going in with the craft knife and I'm just pulling up some little detailed hairs. And then you can add some thicker hairs over the top with a white pencil. Just add a bit of variation. I do recommend using the craft knife as one of the last things that you do. You can make little tweaks afterwards, but don't go and try to add lots and lots of layers because 
you'll lose all those details and so I recommend doing it at the end but I did go in with like a black and a brown just to create more contrast and darken up the shadows again. So like I said, I'm basically just repeating this technique across the whole of the brown fur. I wanted to get all of the brown fur in first and then the fur around the nose is very white. So I will be giving you some techniques on how to draw white fur because that is something that a lot of people find really tricky. So again, add the brown, add some brown ochre for the base. I'm going in with a bit more pressure with that brown ochre just for the shadows and the more saturated areas. Add in some burnt sienna as well. Always try to use a few different colours so that it's not just one tone. You want to get lots of depth in by adding lots of different colours. It just makes it a bit more interesting to look at rather than just having one colour across the whole area. It will look a bit flat. So make sure you layer lots of colours to make it look really, really realistic. So this bit of the pour that I'm doing at the moment was a bit out of focus. There wasn't too much detail to it, so I didn't include too much detail in mine. I did go over and add a little few hairs with the crafting knife though. So I'm just adding some little details. And now I'm gonna work on the nose. So I wanted to go in first and establish all of the shadows. So I went in with the black Caran pencil and I just used that to get in all of the main structure of the nose. So I used it with a bit more pressure on the darkest areas and then the areas that were still dark but not quite as dark, I just used a very light layer so that you could tell the difference between the darkest shadows and the slightly lighter shading. The areas that were more highlighted I left completely white so that I could go in with the greys and these would stand out much brighter. So I went in then with some warmer grey tones because the nose had quite a purplish grey tone to it so I went in with some French greys, a bit of violet grey as well. And I'm also going in now with the white just to pull up some little highlights and just to add some little markings as well. And that's basically it for the nose. And what I'm doing now is working on the white fur. So my biggest tip that I have if you're trying to do white fur is to not just do it white. You might actually be surprised at how much grey shading there is in white fur. So especially if you have a reference photo and you're trying to draw right white fur, I really recommend going in onto that paint software and using the eyedropper tool. Put it on the lightest area of the white fur that you can see and then pull it on the most shadowed area. And I bet you'll be surprised at how dark of grey you'll actually need to colour that in. Especially it can be deceiving when it's next to darker colours. So because the white fur is next to brown fur, it makes it look even brighter. But in reality, it's not white. There's a lot of grey shading. So there's a lot of grey shading underneath his nose. And it's also quite a warm tone grey as well. So what I mean by warm tone is that like cool tone is more like blue gray and then warmer tone has more like browns in it and more like yellow gray. So I added some French grays and the sepia 50% is what I'm using now. And that's more like a gray brown tone. And again, always look at the direction that the fur is going in, especially around the nose. It goes in a lot of different directions. It changes up direction quite a lot. So just pay attention with every little area that you're doing to make sure you're still on track with the reference photo. So I do some longer fur strokes and then some little ones depending on where the fur is. And even on the brightest areas of fur, I'm still adding some sort of grey. Even if I go over that with white and blend that out, I still want some sort of tone there. I don't want it just to be white. There was also some little brown markings around the nose. So I'm just going in with some brown ochre and burnt sienna. Pretty much the colours that I use for the rest of the brown fur. Just go in and add in them in. But I also wanted to make sure the nose transitioned into those brown areas. I didn't want it just to look like the nose was stuck on. It needs to look like it's transitioning into the fur around it. So I made sure that I feathered the black into the fur nearby. And now I'm going in with the white pencil. So the white Caran d'Ache pencil and I'm just using this to soften up the whole area so that the fur wasn't as defined, that it's softer and that the area looks less grainy. 
So as you can see, it's just gave it much more of a smoother look and it looks a lot more realistic. And now I'm going in with the black polychromos pencil and I'm using this just to darken up some of the parts of the nose, some of the fur around the nose. And now I'm going in with the crafting knife. And again, just using that to add some little hairs. I also wanted to transition the white fur into the brown fur around it because there was some white bits of fur that overlapped onto the darker areas. So I wanted to make sure that I included them as well. So now I finished coloring it in, the final thing that I wanted to do was add some highlights. So the product that I'm using is by Brush and Pencil and it's called Titanium White Powder and Touch Up Texture. And you mix them together and it forms this sort of paint like mixture. And this is archival for colored pencils so I just mix that together and I'm just applying it for the highlighted areas. So what I like about this is the fact that you can do this after you've completed all of your colored pencil work and you don't have to preserve things like the whiskers. So I'm just painting on the whiskers now. And what's even better is that I know this, it doesn't look perfect. The whiskers look a bit like too bright. They don't fit in with the rest of the dog. And also the lines aren't clean and like crisp. They're a bit jagged. But what's great is that you can go over this when it's dry with colored pencil. So what I do when this is dry is that I add some tones, some cream tones, some brown ochre to make sure that the whiskers fit in with the rest of the colours of the dog. And I also use my little crafting knife just to shape the lines a bit better. So as you can see, going in with some brown ochre and it just really makes it fit in with the rest of the piece a lot better. And so if you messed up, then it's really easy to go and cover this mixture up with the colour pencil. So I love this product for colour pencil. I used to use white gel pen, but it's not as archival. But anyway, guys, that's it for today's tutorial. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this and want to learn more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn how to draw more animals in colour pencil and other mediums, then make sure you check out my Patreon. Anyway, guys, that's it for today and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.